redfish, grouper, snapper, bluefish. What do all of these names have in common? No, we're not creating a Dr. Seuss book. These are just some of the fish that you can catch right here in Sarasota. Fishing enthusiasts flock from all over to take part in casting their lines to snag the catch of the day. If you're ready to be school, get it, like a school of fish. In all things Sarasota fishing, let me know by clicking the subscribe button. No, no fish puns? Okay, I'll try to scale back on that. Let's reel in that intro. If you're new to my channel, I'm Lindsay Ashley, Realtor with Keller Williams Realty Select. As a native of beautiful Sarasota, I love providing insightful and helpful information to anyone looking to buy, sell, or invest in a home, as well as those relocating here. Feel free to contact me should you be in the market to buy or sell a home in and around Sarasota. Now let's get to the reason you're here, fishing. Our Gulf Coast is an absolute haven for a variety of fish, with freshwater streams and rivers flowing into the bay, which is protected by the barrier islands, it's a perfect size estuary for diverse wildlife. This helps to make up a healthy ecosystem, bringing an abundance of fresh water and saltwater fishing opportunities. But don't go casting that line out just yet. There are some things you need to know before you catch the big one. If you are fishing with a licensed Sarasota fishing charter, all necessary fishing licenses are included in the price. All anglers, residents, as well as non-residents who are fishing on their own, however, need to have an appropriate fishing license before they start fishing. It's also a good idea to look up any local rules and regulations such as bag limits, size regulations, and season restrictions if you plan on keeping fish. If you plan to fish from the beach, please be mindful to stay away from the public swimming areas during the late morning to mid-afternoon hours. This is for the safety of everyone around. The best time for fishing from the shore is usually early and late in the day. Some productive beaches sure to get you the hook, line, and sinker are Siesta Key and Lido Key beaches, so be sure to check those out. Docks and bridges are some other productive fishing spots because these structures attract many different types of fishing species. Wondering what to use as bait? Let's keep it real. Live bait is the best way to go when fishing from a stationary location, with live shrimp being the most top rated and preferred bait. What's nice about this is that they are easily obtainable at local bait shops. Helpful tip. When out on a beach or pier, look for schools of bait fish or birds diving as indicators of fish in the area. This will help you when attempting to get more bites and catches. Besides shoreline fishing, you can also cast your line from a boat or a kayak. With a motorized boat, you can cover much more ground, but be sure to follow boating etiquette and obey speed regulations. Keep in mind that several factors can impact a successful day, such as tides, water temperature, depth of water, and wind. When looking for a spot to fish, keep an eye out for reefs and seabeds, rock and wooden structures. Take a look at the area fishing reports, which can help to identify how and where to fish. A kayak can be the best of both worlds by giving anglers the ability to paddle further from shore and cruising into areas where most boats won't fit. Though not able to travel nearly as far or as fast as a motorized boat, fishing by kayak can be a quieter and more eco-friendly experience. But fishing enthusiasts aren't solely limited to just beach or shoreline fishing. Let's take a look at two other options sure to fill you to the gills with results. Sarasota inshore fishing is what most local charters focus on, and with good reason. Sarasota has year-round populations of several shallow water favorites, including redfish, flounder, and speckled trout. If you can take the heat of a Florida summer, stick around for the likes of tarpon and snook which make finding that Florida sun and heat well worth your fishing efforts. Snook, permit, and tarpon swarm the shallows from May onwards until at least the end of August. The local grass flats, sandbars, and mangroves offer an endless playground for inshore anglers. The different environments mean a variety galore for you. Redfish, trout, and flounder thrive all year round in these waters where you can find plenty of charters just waiting to take you out to try your hand at snagging some of these fish. The Sarasota Tarpon Tournament brings anglers from across the country to try their hand at snagging these amazing fish, but the one downside of this is that the prices of the charters rise. While Sarasota deep sea fishing may not be exactly what the area is best known for, there are still great deep sea species around if you are willing to make the trek. Many species can be found all year round while the main fan favorites are most present during the hot summer months. If you want a trophy sized catch, then you'll want to go offshore fishing with a charter. Fighting to reel in giants such as king mackerel, blackfish tuna grouper, and even sharks 
can be the ultimate battle, but you may need a full day to accomplish this. If you are looking to catch sailfish or decent sized tuna, the best deep sea fishing spots like the Elbow and the West Drop are a good 50 miles away. This means that you will need a full day charter if you want some decent fishing time once you get there. Keep in mind that competition is fierce among Sarasota deep sea fishing charters, but you should be able to find plenty of captains ready to make the long trek out to these deeper waters for this one of a kind fishing experience. You can also find big amberjack in the deeper waters around Sarasota as well as plenty of monster snapper and grouper. Most of Sarasota charters will focus on these species going around 20 miles out. They won't usually be willing to make the long treks required to target big marine species though. So if you're after the big, big one, an upgrade to a private charter is well worth the cost for those serious big game anglers. Let me take a quick break here to invite you to subscribe to my page, especially if you're finding all of this information helpful. I love sharing my local knowledge of Sarasota with everyone because I absolutely love this area and everything about it. So if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button as well as the notification bell and you won't miss any of my future videos. All right, let's get back to talking fish. One additional item to consider when it comes to Sarasota fishing preferences is that of fishing in freshwater or saltwater. Freshwater fishing in Mayaka River State Park or Oscar Shear State Park is a fun option for catching bluegill, speckled perch, and sunfish. Largemouth bass are another popular fish in the freshwater of Florida. Tilapia, an invasive species, must be removed if caught, but many consider this a tasty fillet. Most visiting anglers opt to cast in the bay or offshore as saltwater fishing offers multiple environments with different species of fish favoring different spots. Sea grass beds are home to sea trout, redfish, bluefish, snapper jack, creval, sheep's head, and black drum can be found near piers, bridges, and other structures. Offshore reefs and wrecks are popular hangouts for grouper, amberjack, and snapper. You're welcome. Here are a few popular fishing areas. This is what you've been waiting for, right? The pass between Lido and Longboat Key is a popular fishing location. Fish the bridge structure or try the shore for a variety of fish. Bird Key Park has grass beds as well as bridges and sea walls, which means a variety of opportunities for fishing different species. The southernmost end of Lido Key offers a stretch of beach anglers can utilize to fish out Big Pass. This is a good spot to fish when the tide is right. On Siesta Key, you can fish the Big Pass from North Shell Road. Once again, this is a good spot thanks to the channel's current. Bay Island Park is next to Siesta Key Bridge, another place with a structure, a seawall, and grass beds. This location has a few different access points for anglers. The Venice Inlet has two jetties with lots of rocks, meaning two things, lots of fish and lots of tackle. These rocks will attract snook and sheep's head. A long pier on Casperson Beach next to the popular restaurant, Sharky's on the Pier. The Venice Pier extends quite a ways out into the water. Casperson Beach continues further south and the rocky sea walls provide for some great fishing opportunities. Lemon Park in Inglewood is good for wading, but be sure to have the proper equipment or consider renting a kayak. Stump Pass State Park on the south end of Minnesota Key is a good fishing spot as the tidal currents from the pass bring in schools of fish. Again, before heading out, remember that it is always imperative that you are familiar with local rules and regulations. Here in Florida, you can go to the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission's website, which will be in the description below. So who's ready to cast that line in hopes of shouting, fish on? I know I am. The call of the sea, the pull of the tide, the thrill of the fight, and it's all here, just waiting for you in Sarasota. Come out and explore all that Sarasota fishing has to offer, where you can do a little shoreline fishing in the morning, cruise the mangroves in the afternoon for redfish and flounder, and book a charter the next day for some deep sea fishing. You never know. You may just reel in that king mackerel, blackfin tuna, or maybe even a shark. Have you been fishing yet here? Which type of fishing sets your sails flying? Let me know in the comments Hello, and if you'd like to see more Sarasota water fun and activity videos, I'd love to hear from you all. So if you're thinking, get me to the golf, I'm your person. As always, please feel free to reach out with any questions regarding Sarasota and surrounding cities in the comments below. If you're looking for more information on all things Sarasota, check the description below for a link to my relocation guide. Tight lines, and until next time, bye-bye.